It's time to talk about another Madden 21 update. Now, EA just put out a bunch of information about everything we can expect for the big franchise update that's coming out tomorrow, but they also kind of leaked a little bit of Madden 22 information. I don't know if they did this on purpose, but I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Now, the update does officially roll out tomorrow, but they have given us the franchise info today that we can dive into. So I do expect tomorrow that there might be some other things like gameplay updates as well. So we will have a video tomorrow following up on that if there's more to the update than just just franchise. Now, as many of you know, at the beginning of the year, the Fix Madden franchise movement kind of kicked off. And since then, EA has done two franchise mode updates and they promised to do three. Here is the information on the third one that is coming tomorrow. And remember, stick around because at the end of the video, we got a little bit of a leak for Madden 22 that I think you guys are going to be excited about. So the first thing that's up is league history. That is something they talked about doing. Now it's going to be here in tomorrow's update. It says revisit the history of your franchise through our new running log of key award winners, conference, and Super Bowl champions on a yearly basis. These records will be located in a single hub with a year filter to see the champions award winners from previous seasons. For existing franchises, this will only have data for current season and beyond. If you are in a year-for-year -year franchise, the previous years will not have data. For new franchises made after this update, every year of your league will be tracked. We wanted to make sure to get this feature in as we have plans to build on it in the future. Next up, they go into trade logic and player value improvements, which there's a lot to dive into here, so just kind of buckle in. It says here, in many cases we took top reported community issues with trade value as direct inspiration to design and implement ways to address those concerns in a way that gives tangible changes for Madden NFL 21 and serves as a foundational piece for our tuning in the future. We can and will be better adapting our core systems to better reflect a more realistic player movement experience in the future. When it comes to building your roster, our new tuning is also a shift towards reciprocation approach for highly valued players closer to what we've seen based on changing perceptions of realistic trades over the years with major names changing teams more frequently. At the core, this means that for our users trading for a star, it will cost a package of either high value players, picks, or both. And for the other way, trading away a player. The price to obtain a star or high overall player should, can, in most cases will be steep but rooted against more authentic trade packages. We also want to provide more direct power to users who are willing to move high value players from their own roster to get more in return that wasn't previously possible. Our goal is to have things still make sense in the logic, even if a trade is offered or accepted that is inherently not the best interest for the team to make, while making it cost prohibitive at times to do, a difficult balance without directly blocking users from acquiring who they want. Now we're going to dive even deeper into this. But first, let's hear a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. Now, I just love the performance package kit from Manscaped because it comes with everything you need to make manscaping safe and easy and to keep yourself clean and fresh down there all day long. It comes with the Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof body trimmer that has skin safe technology, meaning it cuts down on those nicks and those cuts. Now, back in the day when I used to Manscaped and they didn't have a product like this, let me tell you, uh, the Manscaping sessions definitely ended in a lot of pain and agony. It also comes with the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer and again much like the lawnmower 3.0 before something like this existed i had to do this the old-fashioned way by plucking them out and let me tell you that ended in a lot of pain and agony it even comes with crop preserver which is deodorant for yep you guessed it your balls i mean look we sweat in other places and we put deodorant there but why haven't we ever thought to put deodorant down there well now we can do that because in the performance package kit manscapes got you covered and if you buy the performance package on their website you'll also get two free gifts the shed travel bag and the anti-chafing boxer briefs make sure to go to manscapecom slash eric 20 for 20 percent off plus your two free gifts plus free shipping your balls will thank you so here's kind of an overview of some of the changes they made with the trade and player movement system. They aligned the trade system to always use a player's best overall rather than using a team's overall. They also addressed legacy issues around offensive linemen value in general. Elite offensive linemen will now be valued at a more authentic cost to acquire like Colts guard Quentin Nelson. They added logic for CPU teams to be able to recognize context around when a player is actually an upgrade when acquiring a player that is not a starter on their current team but would be for the new team. It allows the CPU teams to better recognize when a lower quality caliber player is circumstantially starting rather than a 73 overall rating getting the same base value for being cornerback one as a player like Stefan Gilmore would. So here's some more stuff I'm popping up on the screen here. It's additional updates that you can read. There's just so much to dive into here. I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long, but as you can see, they're factoring in a lot more when you're trading now. A lot more to do with the depth charts, a lot to do with dev traits, a lot to do with which scheme the player is coming from and being traded to. All things that people have asked for for a while now. now 
Now, they did some changes with draft pick values as well, which was much needed. They completely realigned the base value of draft picks to work with new player value changes and more closely aligned with NFL benchmark trade value. So they made second and third round picks valued a little bit higher than they currently were. And they also made impacts to both pick for pick trades as well as pick for players or any mixture of the two. They also made some changes to team philosophy value differences. Say that three times fast. Teams will have more nuanced perspectives of valuing players and draft picks from their own opponents. This creates a situational concept and franchise that we see all the time in the NFL. Just because a team is more open with trading a draft pick in a championship contention window doesn't mean that that team should or does not still value draft picks at all as a core philosophy. There's also some player value modifiers as well, which I'm popping up on the screen here. As you can see, they've added different logic for players in the first year of their contracts and players who are rookies. They added logic to no longer apply bonus for first year of contract value to players who are only signed to a one year contract. Previously, all players on one year contract were receiving a value bonus that was only intended for players on long term contract. They also did some age value tuning where every player position received a new customized age value curve that keeps player values authentically updated as players get older in franchise. As players age, the more the age impacts their value on the market. This allows them to replicate the impact of trade value declining for aging veteran players and provide CPU teams as a way to devalue these players at scale. And of course, each position will be tuned differently. They also made some QB specific value improvements. They added new premium value modifiers to raise QB value compared to same skill positions. This allows QBs to receive similar compensation as they do in real life and is also reflective of our rating scales. For example, an 86 overall QB is a franchise level talent. We wanted to make sure that trading away or for a player at that level is recognized for being a more valuable and rare commodity than possibly a 90 to 93 overall at other positions. All positions have a high age value percentage for players in their early 20s, but just like in real life, QBs are generally more valuable than players of equivalent skill at other positions at any age. Combined with the base value tuning mentioned earlier, this makes young high overall starting QBs exceptionally valuable and a significant investment of draft pick capital to acquire a top player based on overall age, development trait, and other factors. Now, Sean Grady, the executive producer of Madden, put a video in this blog as well where he goes a little bit into detail about the Madden 21 updates, but he also talks a little bit about Madden 22 and secretly, or maybe not so secretly, reveals something. See if you can catch it, watch the video real quick, and we'll talk about it in a second. Hey franchise fans, Sean Grady here, executive producer for Madden NFL. In my first video speaking with you, we recognize your feedback, asking for more from your favorite mode. Since then, we've committed several title updates to the game, and tomorrow we'll deliver our third and final promised franchise update to Madden NFL 21. With this final title update, we will have delivered several highly requested franchise features to Madden NFL. Those improvements include trade logic, league history, X-Factor customization, career stats on player cards, playoff brackets, draft logic tuning, commissioner tools including play call house rules, and much more. Check out the Gridiron Notes for the full details on the latest title update. And while you're there, check out the Gridiron Notes from the previous franchise updates in case you missed those. Now, this process takes time and careful planning, but we're just getting started. Franchise mode will continue to be a priority in Madden NFL 22 and beyond, including in our live service plan, as we've shown in Madden NFL 21, where really the launch is just the beginning. In Madden 22, work is well underway. We're collecting input from a number of resources to ensure we deliver a franchise experience that our fans want. This includes feedback from you, the community, of course our game changers, and the many passionate franchise fans that work on the development team. The franchise community continues to be incredibly important to us on behalf of the entire Madden NFL team. We can't wait to share with you what we're working on for Madden NFL 22, so please, Stay tuned. Now, what did you see there in that video in the background? I know you saw it because I saw it clear as day on that screen. It was full coaching staffs, which is something that is planned for Madden 22. They already said they were planning to do it, but they wouldn't quote unquote commit to it yet. Well, as Sean Grady was there talking about the Madden 21 updates and also the fact that they want to push forward in Madden 22 and give people what they want, we're seeing the top community request right there in the background on the screen. So it looks like assistant coaches finally, after all of these years, are coming back to franchise mode in Madden 22 and I know that's going to make a lot of people happy so hopefully there's some other stuff on top of that and as you know I'll always keep you guys up to date so hope you enjoyed this video make sure to check out some of these other videos right here and as always I will see you guys next time.